What's going on all my YouTube buddies? I'm Jacob with another video. Welcome to another installment in the 5 Must See series where I take 5 specific movies and just share with them why they're essential movies and why they're must watches. I did a previous video where I talked about 5 essential classics that you must watch. Today's video I'll be sharing 5 essentials from the master of suspense himself, Alfred Hitchcock. Alfred Hitchcock is one of the best directors who's ever made movies. He's made some one suspenseful classic after another. I recently reviewed two of his movies on my channel, Psycho and The Birds. I'm not going to include those in this video because I've already talked about those two movies enough, especially Psycho, which is the best horror movie ever. So I'm going to share five other Hitchcock movies that I strongly recommend and are absolute must-watches. First off is a movie that Alfred Hitchcock admitted that it was his absolute favorite movie to make. And it is a movie called Shadow of a Doubt. It's one of his more obscure films that came out in 1943. The premise is about a man who comes down and visits his extended family. He visits his niece who views him as like his favorite uncle ever. But off the bat, there's automatically something wrong with this guy. He's clearly obsessive, especially towards his niece. And he's very much obsessed and fascinated with murder. There's a dark secret within this guy's past, and it's up to the niece to figure out what it is before it's too late. And I'm, I'm not going to give away too much this movie, because the whole movie relies on just the dread and the suspense of the dark secrets of the uncle's past. And then once you know things get revealed, things take a dark turn, and you're just left on the edge of your seat. I think the performances in here are very remarkable. The uncle especially is very slimy and sneaky throughout the entire film. I think it's all around a fantastic film. It's been a while since I've seen it, but I remember coming out of it thinking, wow, Shadow of a Doubt is criminally underrated. It's among Hitchcock's finest films for sure. Another Hitchcock movie I find criminally underrated is Strangers on a Train. Strangers on a Train was released in, I think, 1951. The premise involves two men who meet on a train. One is a famous tennis player. The other is this rich guy. And the rich guy is obsessed with murder. And he convinces the tennis player to try to collaborate on a murder together. And then it gets really crazy from there. And again, it's another one of those movies I don't want to spoil the plot because I, it's not one of his most remembered films compared to some of the others I'm going to get to. But it's crazy. It's a really crazy film. The direction in this movie in particular is fantastic. There's two sequences in particular that, even though I've only seen this movie once, they stick with you in your brain uh, because of how unsettling this movie is. One of the murders takes place in the point of view of somebody's glasses as they're being killed. That sequence is pretty awesome. And then there's this other like really bonkers sequence that takes place on a carousel ride that goes swirling out of control. And for a movie came out in that time, it's amazing that nobody got hurt while filming that sequence. I was just blown away with how insane that sequence is. It's a big cat and mouse chase of, are they, is he going to get away with it? Is the other guy going to get involved and be a part of this crazy plot? It's all around an insane movie and another essential from Alfred Hitchcock and another underrated film from the director. Now we're getting on to more of the more iconic Alfred Hitchcock movies. And the next one is... North by Northwest. Now the interesting thing about North by Northwest is the central premise of this film would later inspire something like the 007 films. The movie stars Cary Grant as a writer. I think he's a writer. It's been a while since I've seen it. But he's caught in a case of mistaken identity and some hitmen are after him because they think he's a spy type character. And so Cary Grant gets 
crawled into this insane little conspiracy plot. He teams up with Eva Marie Saint. One of the villains is played by James Mason. There are some iconic set pieces throughout this movie. Cary Grant in one scene is chased by a crop duster who's out to kill him. There's a sequence that's set at Mount Rushmore and they're being pursued on top of Mount Rushmore. There's a double cross that happens in the United Nations. There's a lot of insane stuff sprinkled throughout this film and it's easily one of the director's most entertaining films. Even though it's not a horror film or a thriller, it's more of an action adventure type spy film and it's still just as effective as any other Hitchcock film. And there's still some great little themes sprinkled throughout the film that's still just as engaging. Like the mistaken identity plot, which Hitchcock used as a device for a good chunk of his movies. And I think he used it to the best here. Cary Grant is just so entertaining in this film. And it's crazy. He almost got the role of 007 because of this movie. Of course, by then, Cary Grant's like, nah, I'm too old. Give it to Sean Connery. Still love this movie. I don't think we would have... I guess the 007 franchise without North or Northwest, so I gotta give props to that movie for that, at least. Another one of my absolute favorite Hitchcock movies is Rear Window, and it's a fantastic movie. I think it's in my top three Hitchcock movies. The premise is Jimmy Stewart, who, he's stuck in his apartment because he's recovering from some injuries. He's stuck in a wheelchair, and he's waiting for his legs to recover before he gets back on the journalism field. While he's sitting there, because this is before the age of social media and Facebook, uh, he snoops around and sees what some of his neighbors are doing, and he suspects some foul play. And he senses that he that there might have been a murder that was hidden in the shadows. Uh, there's a love interest character who's played by Grace Kelly, one of the most beautiful actresses that ever lived of that era. They work so great together in trying to solve this murder that everybody thinks is a little far-fetched. I think there are some crazy obsessive themes in this film, and the movie even paints Jimmy Stewart as he's not a perfect guy. He spies some pretty naughty things from other people, and he seems to be enjoying it, which is kind of creepy in itself. There's this nurse character that's helping heal Jimmy Stewart's character, and she's a hilarious little comic relief character. And then the movie boils down and intensifies in this insane little third act that even though the movie's set in one location, you forget that because by the time the movie ends, you've learned so much out of so many characters, especially the background characters. Like, there's a lot with the background characters that Jimmy Stewart sees that are just as important to the plot as the main murder mystery. It's all around an engaging experience, and I love Rear Window. It's one of his most subtle movies, and I think it's brilliant. And lastly, I gotta talk about Vertigo. Now, Vertigo was a movie that flopped when it first came out, but has since become one of Hitchcock's most essential classics. In fact, in the most recent critic sight and sound poll, Vertigo actually recently top Susan Cain as the best movie of all time on that poll. And Susan Cain was considered the best movie for years. And Vertigo, I actually, I would say, is a better movie than Susan Cain, to be honest. The premise of Vertigo, if you're not aware, it's another movie starring Jimmy Stewart. And he plays a retired detective who was forced into retirement because of his case of Vertigo where he's afraid of heights and that led to a tragedy he feels responsible for that so he quit so he gets called back in by an old friend who wants him to investigate the the, the mysterious activities of his wife who assumes the identity of a mysterious woman who's increasingly suicidal and has some weird tendencies and does other things and during this case, Jimmy Stewart starts to fall in love with this woman played by Kim Novak, and they start to form a little relationship of their own. Crazy things start coming. Uh, things happen. Jimmy Stewart gets crazy obsessive over different other women because of the case with Kim Novak's character. And the twists get crazier and crazier as it goes along. 
The movie serves as this epic forbidden romance movie. It's this crazy obsessive thriller and it's also a drama falling into one movie. The cinematography is some of the best in any Hitchcock film and the score from Bernard Herrmann is just as effective as Psycho. There's a dream sequence about midway in the film. Probably some of the most unsettling intense music I've ever heard in a movie. But it works so, so well. Vertigo is awesome. There's a lot of really enriching themes in there of love and loss and obsession. And I'm glad the movie's grown to be a classic because, like I said, it didn't do well when it originally came out. And it's all around a fantastic movie. Definitely check it out if you haven't already. It's one of Hitchcock's greatest movies up there with Psycho for sure. So that wraps up this edition of 5 Must Sees. Let me know down in the comments below if you've seen all these Hitchcock movies or are a fan of them or if you hadn't seen any of these films, did this video inspire you to go check them out now? If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, click the subscribe button to see more content and a notification bell next to it to be notified of future videos. If this is your first video, I usually do movie reviews, TV reviews, trailer reactions, ranking videos, and other fun stuff along the way. I have some more videos planned for you soon. I hope you all have an amazing day. God bless, and I will see you next time. Goodbye!